Okay, so let's get started. I just want to thank everyone for joining us and welcome to our first co-hosted webinar all about creating successful shops. I'm Ashley, account manager here at CommaSkew with my shop expert co-host, Bree, who is the senior customer success specialist. It's a mouthful. <laughs> it is. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. So we don't want to downplay the current situation at all. Um, and I know there are bigger problems out there and people have had to give up a lot, um, but this is a safe space. And one thing we've been talking about is that we really miss shopping in this isolation. Um, so naturally I've moved to online shopping more and I don't think I'm alone in this. The stats say e-commerce revenue in all sectors is up. In our industry, we're seeing more and more clients want online shopping solutions for their branded merchandise programs. Um, so Brie, you talk to distributors all day. What are some of the things that you've been hearing? Yeah, I would have to say a lot of common SKU distributors have been reaching out for advice on kind of how to accommodate their clients' requests. So there's been lots of requests for online kind of solutions. Um, some teams are changing their approach. So they've got longstanding programs that they now want to make a little bit more streamlined. So things like uniforms, for example. There's other clients that just frankly want a faster way to be able to order items. So if they need things on hand for employees or for partners, has been another one. A really cool one that I've been hearing that's just popped up recently was a team reached out with questions about a shop for kind of an event. So like an event driven um, sort of idea where products were actually ordered beforehand and then they were given out to the attendees at the event. So I thought that was really cool. I love that idea. And it's also really cool for right now as more conferences are moving online to be able to send out like a shop where they could actually pick out their swag for that event. Um, and it also kind of eliminates waste. And I just think it's a really cool idea, giving people the products that they actually want. I think so many ends, right? If it's gonna be having the right sizes in stock, or like you just said, making sure people are having the items that they're gonna value most. Um, so a lot of ways that you can kind of be saving, I would say. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, so during this webinar, we're going to keep the questions open to you. If you do have any questions as you go, just feel free to type them into the chat or the Q&A, um, and we'll try and answer them. If we can't get, it, can't get to you, uh, we will reply after. So um, there are three different shops in Common SKU, and we'll walk you through each one. Um, just to show you, there's the marketing shop. So this one's really great if you want to put together a bunch of ideas and send it out to your whole contact list. Um, and then they can upload their artwork and it creates an order for you. And then the other two, the pop-up shop and the company shop. So those are for specific clients. Um, the pop-up, you can use that whenever you need to aggregate orders together. And then the company shop is like our answer to the corporate store. So we're going to dive into each one. The first one is the marketing shop. Um, it's a very hot category right now, the health and wellness. We created this beautiful shop in under an hour. So imagine sending this out as an email blast to your clients so they can order, upload their artwork, and then the orders flow into Common SKU and you just convert to a sales order and then a PO to your suppliers. So I'll pass it over to Bree so she can show you around. So before we dive in, I just wanna say marketing shops are my favorite. So they really help you to highlight your top product recommendations. And we always get questions around sending presentations to multiple clients. And marketing shops are kind of the perfect solution for that because you're sending this out to multiple clients or prospects. So everybody's able to order from it. Now, before I dive into our home health and wellness, I just wanna share some other examples I've seen for marketing shops. I would say a really big one was holiday gifts. So I've seen holiday gifts, I've seen kind of uniforms on there. Um, wedding supplies was also really cool. So just kind of back to those event driven sort of shots. Now I am gonna have to give a shout out here. I don't know if they're on the webinar, but shout out to Fred and Paola with STS Brand. Um, they shared their marketing shop success story during a customer growth story with Bobby. So if you haven't checked that out, it's a really good read as well. Now, just diving into this shop here. So the home health and wellness shop features products that kind of fit under that health and wellness theme. I've chosen the featured layout, so I'm highlighting some specific items, but of course, the shoppers can pop in and see everything that we've made available. Now, they can view specific products by clicking into these titles. This is really just an easy way to make categories. So our shoppers are seeing all of the options without kind of an overwhelming number of items. 
Now we want to show them all of their choices too. So when they're honing into products, they can be viewing different images based on whatever you've uploaded. All of the product detail is there as well. Now, once the shopper actually goes to add something in, this could be a client you have a relationship with, or this might be somebody who's brand new. So marketing shops actually allow the shopper to upload their logo in here. That way, when you're getting the sales order, you've got the artwork and it's good to go as well. Now, one more thing to highlight just at this stage would be that minimum quantity. So this is turning into an order. You are able to enforce the minimum quantity and that ensures that you meet whatever minimums you need to actually get this produced. So they can keep shopping if they want to add some different items in here. As soon as they've uploaded the artwork once, they're able to keep using that same image. So they're welcome to continue using the same one, upload as many as they need. Now, once they go to checkout, I mean, nice and easy, they enter billing and shipping details, they submit the order, they get an email notification that's submitted, you get an email alert that it's submitted, and then you can start processing it. So I'm just going to pop back into the marketing shop as I'm hanging out here. Ashley, do we have any questions from our listeners? <laughs> All right. So does anyone have any questions about the marketing shop? It's going to pop up in the Q&A. Um, so here's a question from Sherry. Can we send a marketing shop in a mass email from CommonSkew to all our clients? So CommonSkew doesn't have a marketing component, but we do have a direct integration with Wishpond. So ultimately, the shop is just sending as a live link. As long as you get that live link into Wishpond, you can send that pre-constructed email. But you could really use kind of any e-blast you want. So for example, MailChimp is definitely a big one. You know, use our mailing list report, get your contact information out there, and then just construct an email that has this live link in it. It's going to make sure everybody gets it. Awesome. Um, so the next question is from Alicia. Can you require a certain file type for the art? They enter. So I'm guessing she's, she wants to know if you can encourage them to upload the proper art, whether that's in vector format or. Yeah, that's a great art. question. <laughs> so there's no way to set a requirement on the artwork type. Some close things would be adding something to the product description. So at this stage, specifying what type of artwork is required. You can also customize the intro and checkout messages to your shop. So you could pop in detail there. But worst case scenario, if they upload the wrong art type, you can always correct that with the final order. So I do just want to emphasize with marketing shops, it is creating a sales order, but you're still going to want to make updates to this total. So things like taxes or shipping will need to be included. That's also a perfect time just to double check you've got the correct art file. Okay, and another question from Mel. Um, she wants to know on the checkout page, can you add a spot for a contact phone number? I think Bree showed before all the... Um, Oh, so in the in the details that are in here. So mm -hmm. it doesn't require a contact number at this stage. Again, I would say in the splash screen, that's something that you could add to the intro message. So just asking them to add that in a comment area. Um, but that's also an interesting idea, too. I can toss it over to my team and maybe see uh, if that's something we could pop in here as well. So thank you for that feedback. That's a great note. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then one final question um, from Sherry. Can you capture freight and tax on these orders? Um, and I think you just answered that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll just round that out though. So in the marketing shop, we are not capturing freight and taxes because we don't really know who this person is. So they're entering the details here. When it lands as that final sales order, that's when you would make those updates. So adding freight, adding taxes, double checking artwork, adding any additional services, and then maybe also just mentioning other products that might be good. Um, again, the shop is showing a really focused view of the items, but you can always be mentioning to people there's other options as well. Um, so just to round that out, yeah, you would add that to the final order. Okay, so thanks for all your questions. We do have a couple more, but I think we'll move on to the next shop. And if we didn't get your question answered, we will follow with an email. Um, so the next shop we're gonna dive into is the pop-up shop. Um, and probably one of our most popular shop options. So have you ever had an order where you need to gather a bunch of different sizes, product SKUs, and you end up with a big complicated mess of a spreadsheet? Um, if you have, then the pop-up shop is your answer. It solves a big issue a lot of distributors find themselves facing, and that's how to aggregate all these small orders together to create one PO to your supplier. So Bree's going to show us one of her amazing pop-up shops. All right, so let's pop in here. Um, so thank you, Ashley. 
Now we have actually had some teams that have switched from other e-commerce solutions just to have the convenience of having the bulk order inside common SKU. Now pop-up shops really fit so many different use cases. So I'm gonna show two examples today, but this is not kind of a one size fits all. So there's a lot of different things that you can be doing with these. Now, the first example that I'm showing is actually an example of a donation shop. I do have to give two more shout outs here because I kind of stole this idea. So um, shout out to Julie, who was with Promotions, etc. And then, of course, Gabe and Thomas over at Screen Broidery. They shared their donation shop ideas during social hour. So if you haven't been part of Community Social Hour, I'm also going to shout that out. <laughs> you should definitely check it out because um, there's great ideas percolating in there. Now, just to highlight, this is a donation shop, so we are raising funds for this specific organization. Of course, I can hyperlink that info in here as well in case the shopper wants to learn a little bit more. Now, when we're popping in here, what I actually want to highlight about this shop are the product images. So these are actually two different products, and I've just designed the images in a way that they take up a lot more space than usual. So for anyone who is familiar with using shops, usually two images would be quite small on the screen. But because I've used a little bit of a different format, I get more control of the layout. So that's going to give you some control around the design. Now, if we pop in here, the other thing that I want to highlight about this shop is, of course, the retail pricing. So pop-up shops have a retail price that your shopper pays, which can be different than what you're charging your client. So quick example, maybe Ashley reaches out to me because she needs some donation items. I'm going to sell those for $15 on her behalf, and I'm only charging her $10. So that additional $5 is going to be Ashley's piece of that profit. So any kind now, of fundraiser, and we were talking about this before, um, so at any time if you want to pull a report and see how much money you're actually bringing in off of this like fundraising shop, you can actually do that within the platform. Yeah, definitely. So once you've created your shop, you can be adding tags and you can use tags to track the orders that are coming through there. Um, but of course, with pop ups, you can start that order at any point and then just add the checkouts to it. So you're watching it combine. You can be tracking that total. And then once it hits whatever minimum you need, you can move that into production. So this isn't like a one time turnaround. You can turn this into five or 10 different sales orders if you want. So usually getting that sales order created once you have um, built up enough that it's ready to be put in. Okay, so I am going to move to a second example here as well. Um, oh, there's my mouse. Okay. <laughs> so here's an example of a shop to allow conference attendees to get merchandise when the event is passed. Um, but of course, you could use the same premise for an upcoming conference or particularly a virtual conference. Um, it's been really cool. We've been hearing more of that happening lately. So, you know, in this example, this is shout out to SKUCon, get your SKUCon merch. I do want to highlight, I am taking advantage of that $200 checkout limit. So pop-up shops allow you to put a cap on what the shopper is ordering. Um, in my example, I'm saying $200 is on us, but this could also be relevant for things like employee gifts if the employer does have a maximum. Now, last shout out, I promise. <laughs> this does have to go out to um, Laurel and Sean who are over at IMM. Um, they reached out with their feedback. They had a use case where the customer needed the limit and it's just been a really great compliment in here. So that's one way to take advantage of it. Now, just popping in, Again, they're ordering products. Of course, we're not enforcing minimums. I don't expect one shopper to order, you know, 25 different tumblers or whatever it may be. Now, when they're entering their checkout details, you do get control around these custom questions. So this allows you to capture information from your shopper and you can actually require them to answer it before they submit it. So if it's detail you need or detail your client needs, this is a good place to grab it. I've inserted a quick cheat because a common request has been, of course, how do I get my shoppers shipping information if you're shipping directly to them? So custom questions, nice and easy way to do that. This can be an order submission or this can also be a pay by credit card option. So you can take payment up front. And then, of course, you could pop in things like tax or shipping as well. Well, so I'm going to pop back in again to the pop up shop. <laughs> um, any questions, Ashley? Yeah, so let me just pop open the Q&A here. Um, all right, so we've got one here from Sean. Can you do a separate margin for items and decoration? I tried a pop-up shop and couldn't find a way to do a different margin for the decoration. So in the so, back end, can there be 
different yeah. margin. On the back end, the decoration and product pricing is set up the same way as presentations. We actually recently launched an update though with your decoration pricing that you can choose how it displays. In my example here, I've wrapped up decorations into the price point, so kind of that all-inclusive pricing. Um, but now you can actually even display setups as a separate cost as well. So there should be separate edit screens. Um, the product itself is up top. The decoration pricing goes into that artwork location. So make sure you're adding in an artwork location. That's where you'd be able to capture the art details as well as that price point. Okay, and then I have a question from Jennifer here. Um, so she's been creating shops for recipients to receive one of several items for an event um, and she's been using the price to limit the quantity but is there an easier way to limit the number of items that can be selected if employees are only allowed to select one so if they're only allowed one tumbler is there a way to limit that so jennifer actually you're using the best approach right now so to use that checkout limit or dollar value as a way to restrict them from ordering additional items um, there's no way to kind of set that they can order you know three items only or that they can order you know x group of item and then one more so definitely using that checkout limit workaround is the best approach um, another option if you didn't want to do that would be again i'm always going to come back to the splash screen or help area you can have instructions and you still get control of these checkouts so if somebody makes a checkout and you know it's got too much in it they can't order that you could always loop back to them and just say hey you know you ordered four products it is a limit of three um, maybe you can delete their checkout they can redo the order or you can kind of discuss stuff from there but you know jennifer sounds like you've got the rest approach already Okay, so another question for you from Kathy. Can you change the size after a client purchases an item without deleting the transaction? So the checkouts themselves, so, and I just wanna make sure everyone's familiar with the terminology. When I submit this, this is one checkout. So the checkout itself cannot be amended. It's gonna stay as is, and it's kind of just keeping that integrity of what your shopper ordered. The other thing is the shopper, the shopper gets a confirmation of what they ordered. So we wanna keep that in line. So you can't edit that exact checkout, but what you can do is edit that final sales order. So once you start combining things, you've got that sales order you're working in, you could then pop in and just make changes to that specific SKU if you wanted to. Um, that's probably the easier route is just to make your updates there. And then of course, you know, editing the sales order, you can always add in additional sizes or services from what you've talked about with your client. Now, you did raise another point there, which is you could just delete and have the shopper redo the checkout. So that is a point of preference. You know, would you prefer just to make the edits on your end in the order, or would you like the shopper to complete a brand new one? That way they've got that checkout document, you've got the accurate checkout, it's all in line. I guess like if they're checking out with credit card, you would want them to have to replace that order so that it's a transaction. But um, if yeah. you didn't have to cancel it and there was no credit card upon checkout, then you could just go in and place that order on the correct size. Yeah, that's definitely a great point, Ashley. Thank you for bringing that up too. Uh, definitely if it was a credit <laughs> card payment, um, probably want to have them have them redo that. <laughs> Um, so there's a couple of questions here about seeing the back end and how to aggregate the orders all together. Um, so clearly that's something that everyone wants to see. So I'm sure Brie can follow with either a video of how to do that or um, you can reach out to her and she can show you in person. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so um, there are a few other questions and we will get back to you on those. But for time's sake, how about we dive into the final shop? Um, so that would be our company shop. And this is your answer to the corporate store. So if you're lucky enough to have a client that is growing during this time, and there are clients out there like medical or technology company, or imagine if you had the Zoom account, uh, you might want to create a company store so they can easily order their branded merchandise and reorder on demand. So on a positive note, Brie and I were thinking it might be nice to create a welcome back to work shop. It might be a little too soon for some people, um, but we just want to have some fun with it. You could send this out um, to, your, to your database or post it on social and just kind of get people thinking about what that will look like, whether they go back to the office or just back to, the, back to work. So <laughs> over to you, Brie, to show this one off. Yeah, I just want to say I've spoken with several teams about the company shops, and those are definitely the two common use cases right now. So, you know, I understand not everyone has their Zoom or Slack accounts they're working with, but a lot of teams are still getting these shops created. That way, when your client reopens or things kind of level out again, this is already good to go and they can start using them. 
Um, so as you said, Ashley, this is an example of kind of a welcome back or bounce back company shop. And in my example here, the assumption would be that you know, the manager's popping in and making an order for their entire location. So I do want to emphasize with company shops, every order placed through the shop makes a sales order inside Common SKU. So we're not going to combine these at the end of the day. As soon as this order is placed, I want to be able to move it into production right away. So we're going to explore the shop in just a second, but before we do, I just want to touch on this splash screen and how powerful the messaging you're using in here can actually be. You know, I know the shop isn't real, but I got excited writing it and I can only imagine kind of excited or how excited a manager would be kind of coming in and getting to read this. So, you know, yes, you're telling the shopper how the shop works, what to expect, but this is also an opportunity for your client to get some more personal messaging and really connect with their team as well. So just popping inside here, uh, very common questions that we get with company shops would be how to do the kits and then also how to get the branded product images because of course you want to brand this for your clients. My answer to both of those questions is actually just to collaborate and you can collaborate with suppliers, reach out, ask them for product ideas, ask them for branded images. A lot of suppliers already have kits. That's actually what I've done in this example. But if you are creating a custom kit, you can always add a custom item as well. Just show the custom item in the shop, make it nice and clean for your client, and you can update things in the sales order. So like I mentioned, once the person actually begins adding these products, company shops do enforce minimums because we want to be able to move the sales order into production. In this case, of course, I've accounted for any artwork charges that are going to be on there as well. Now, when they actually go to check out, they're entering billing and shipping details, and this is based on the choices that you've provided them. So you can be specific about who is able to use the shop. Maybe I have contacts that have permission. Um, maybe I'm going to let them add their own contact. Same thing goes with addresses. And then when it comes to order submission, again, this can be just submitting a sales order, which you have the control to edit, or this could be a full credit card checkout where we have included tax. Um, and of course, you can pop shipping in here as well. Okay, so I am going to pop back here because we do have some time left. So I want to make sure, do we have any questions about company shops? Okay, let me just check here. Um, it looks like most of the questions were from the last one. Okay, here we go. So can we use multiple logos in a company shop? Um, so you could use multiple logos. There's kind of two ways to do it. And it really depends on the product and how many variants it has. So one way is to, of course, have different products in here. Maybe this product is with this BB logo. And then I'd have the same item that maybe actually had the company name written out. So two separate products with two separate logo choices. Another option, depending on your size color choices, is that you could actually add the logo as one of those variants where they're selecting it from the drop down. Um, I don't think any of these products have different sizes or colors, but if there was a size color, they would select it from the drop down. That would at least tell you which one they wanted to order. And from there, you would just update the final sales order accordingly. So I'd make sure that that final sales order had the artwork detail that it needs. Um, and I'm also giving my shopper kind of that ease of just clicking the drop down. So that one is pretty case specific. Uh, if you have more questions around that, please just reach out to support because I'd want to talk through the use case just to give you the best recommendation. One thing I've seen is um, companies that have multiple brands, they'll actually create them as the links across the top. So it'll be logo one, logo two, logo three, and then they can go and just order whatever items are under that brand logo. Yeah, exactly. So you might have them as separate products, but clean it up with those titles. So I didn't add titles to this one just because it's the four items. Yeah. So it doesn't take up too much space, but that would be a really good step and it would simplify it for the shopper too. I think any way you can make it easier for them, the better. Awesome. Um, so we just got through all three shops. I'm proud of us when we practiced this. It took us well over an hour. <laughs> um, so if anybody has any questions right now, we do have a little bit of time to answer them. If there's any pop-up questions that aren't about the back end, I could dig into those right now as well. Otherwise, um, like Ashley mentioned at the beginning, I can reach out with some more personal responses if you want a tour of that aggregation. Um, there is one question here. How many slides for images per product? And oh. I think it's the same in all shops. So how many 
images can you have per, per item? I've never really tested a maximum, but I've also never run into an issue. So I think I've done products that had like 20 different images. I realized after updating all of those colors that it was actually easier for me to just to add like a color chart. <laughs> um, but as far as I know, there isn't a limit. If you hit one, let me know. We'll, we'll get that updated, but you can add as many as they need. Um, and so here's another question about Sage and how it works with shops. Um, so will Sage be available for future shops? And currently right now we're just integrated with ESP, um, but you can manually add in any other products that you need. Yeah, so I don't um, know anything about Sage becoming available during shops. As far as I know, that's not on the roadmap right now. So unfortunately, we're not able to use their integration in here. Um, so like you just mentioned, Ashley, there is ESP, there's Distributor Central. You can add products as custom items. That would be another choice. So just building out the detail. Um, I would actually also just say collaborate. If the suppliers you're sourcing from are in common SKU, just do a collaboration request. So start a project, start a collaboration, and just tell them, hey, here's the items I need, here's the branding I need, um, and you can copy that into a shop. So that's kind of, I think, the easiest workaround and take stuff off your shoulders. Cool. Well, I think that just about wraps that, the questions up. Um, Bree, did you have any closing remarks you'd like to make? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple. So I mean, feel free to reach out to support if you have any questions. Any questions that haven't been answered um, from today's session, I'll just be reaching out. So, you know, don't worry, I will double check and I'll contact you through email. I can always insert a quick video if that makes it easier. Um, and of course, I mean, whether you're new to shops, you've created a few already. My number one recommendation is to check out our one stop for everything shops page. This is an external page that has some demo shops that you can play in. It has links to help articles. It has how-to videos. And all of the demo shops in here have been revamped. So if you saw them before, they look different now. So definitely take advantage of that. Um, but please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to support. We're always happy to help. Awesome, thank you. Um, and if you're not on Common SKU, but you think shops would help you win some new business, we can help you with that too. So we're happy to work with you, put together a pitch deck for your clients as your technology partner, um, and see if that helps you land some business. And then if you're ready to jump on board, we can expedite the training. Um, and again, if you're not currently on Common SKU and you wanna try out this feature, we're happy to get you set up with a free trial so you can try it out. Um, and thanks so much for joining us. We are recording this, so if you do wanna share it with your team, we will send out the recording after. Oh, and don't forget uh, to join our weekly happy hour tomorrow at 4 p.m. And that's Wednesday, <laughs> I think. <laughs> as long as today yeah. is still Tuesday. <laughs> All right. Bye, See everyone. Ya. Bye. Bye, Ashley. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>